God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. We're located at 707 Wilder Street, Cedar Hill, Texas, 75104. Our email address is abundant.grace at att.net. And today is Sunday, April the 29th in the year 2012. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. And our message title today is, What is your excuse for not coming to Christ? Now, I will be coming from Luke chapter 14 and verse 18, which reads, And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. That people are making excuses for not coming to Christ. So the writer of this gospel is Luke, the beloved physician. Or Dr. Luke, he was a Gentile physician. And he was a missionary companion of Paul the Apostle. He wrote this about A.D. 58 to 60 from Palestine. And the theme of this gospel is Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of all mankind, whether Jew or Gentile. So, a couple facts about it, about the things written here, is that one, it doesn't matter where you're from, what you have done. Jesus came to seek and to save you. So Luke's gospel account is addressed to a man named Theophilus. In order to set forth the declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. That means among Christians. Okay, so, as with all the Gospels, Luke shows Jesus' resurrection, adding detailed accounts of his appearances to two believers on the Emmaus Road and the remaining 11 disciples. As the Gospel ends, Jesus is ascending into heaven, setting the stage for a sequel of sorts to Luke's gospel, which is the book of Acts. So a few important scriptures in the, the gospel of Luke are Luke 12 and 34, Luke 15 and 7, Luke 17 and 33, and Luke 18 and 17, Luke 19 and 10. So we will open with Luke chapter 14 and verse 16, which says, Then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, which means he invited many to come. And that's in the King James Version. In the uh, contemporary English Version, it says, Jesus told him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited a lot of guests. So, a banquet we would consider a supper or a feast. And it was great because of the amount of people that were invited. And so we say, we're going to have a big party or a big banquet or a big dinner. That's, that means that there's going to be en enough food to complement all those that were invited. Okay? So where it says, bade many, that means invited many beforehand. It's like when you get in a, a, a wedding invitation and you have to sign the card that says that you will go to the, the banquet afterward, you know, celebration afterward. So that's what we're referring to. So they know how many people are going to come. So if, if they invite 200 people, well, they have to have enough food to feed 200 people. They invited thousands and thousands. So the bigger the wedding, the greater the feast. Okay? And that's what it really pertains to. The banquet, you know, at, at dinner. Then, of course, you know, at the end when we are as Christians in heaven with Jesus Christ, after the, the wedding, we had the wedding feast of the Lamb. And that's where we will be. So, there is little difficulty in understanding this parable. The man who made the supper is without doubt designed to represent God. 
the supper, the provisions which he has made are for the salvation of the people. And the invitation, this is the offer made to the people, particularly the Jews, for salvation. So we have three different points that are made here. The one that is having the banquet is God. So God is the one that calls us through his Holy Spirit. <coughs> and we have to understand that there are provisions made for salvation. And the salvation is the food at the banquet. Come and eat. Come and partake. Okay? So we have to understand that everything is set up. And those that are invited were, of course, naturally and firstly, the Jews. Then when they refused, not all the Jews refused, but when the Jewish nation as a whole refused, then that opened the door for the Gentile population to come in. Okay? So that's what, that's what we have to understand. Now, in the parable, we may observe a few things. One, the free grace and mercy of God which means the free grace of mercy, what God gives us freely, something that we cannot obtain through works. We cannot obtain it through doing things good for other people. We must accept God's provision, which is His Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. as our Savior and Lord. And it appears that the rich provision that He has made is for souls that are lost and souls that are hurting, souls that are weak. And God wants to nourish us and refresh us by allowing us to come and to partake of his gift of eternal life through Christ. So he wants to feed our souls through salvation in Jesus Christ. Okay? So... As it is shown, we see in, in 16 that a certain man made a great supper. Now, there is that in Christ and the grace of the gospel which will be food and a feast for the soul of man that knows its own capacities. So we have to understand that. That, you know, the soul of the sinner needs to be fed. It needs information. It needs that gentle touch. And that can only come through Christ. Even we as Christians, we hurt a lot. And we need peace and comfort. And because we received from God the food that our soul needs. You know, every soul hungers for something. But a lot of times it doesn't know what it's hungering for. That's why we must take the gospel to those that are lost, to those that are hungry, because the natural tendency of man is to search the world for happiness. That's right. mm -hmm. But happiness is through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not the things in this world or of this world. Although we can have pleasure in them, we can enjoy them, they are not our source of happiness and peace. And mercy, it is only through Jesus Christ that we can achieve those things. Yeah. Okay? So th that, that, that's what we have to understand. Now, a general invitation is given. And God asked many to come. He invited many. See, Christ invited the whole nation of Israel to partake in the benefits. But what did they do? They refused him. But to those that did, he gave the right to become the sons of God. Look at it, the whole nation of Israel. You can count the numbers. He had 12 uh, disciples that he called apostles. Look how many were there on the mount when he went up. 120. Now look at all the, how many millions of Jews were there but they wouldn't partake. And the Jews I did accept, you can name them. You know, Nicodemus. 
right there. He did. The very few accepted him and accepted his gift of eternal life, accepted who he was. When he was the Messiah, he said, I am the Messiah. Are you the Messiah? I am the Messiah, but they didn't want to accept him as the Messiah. They, they said it was blasphemy. Crucify him. What else did they say? Give us Barabbas. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see? They wanted everything else but him as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Because they were looking for something great. They were looking for a deliverer. Mm -hmm. Now, they considered Moses a deliverer of the people to deliver them out of bondage, and that's what he did. He was called by God. But Jesus was sent by God. Jesus is God. Okay? And he is the deliverer of our souls from what? From the punishment of God because of sin. Mm -hmm. Two, we have to see that also a particular memorandum is given. When the supper time was at hand, the servant was sent around to remind them about it and said to come because all things are ready. And when the Spirit was poured out on the Jews at Pentecost, of course, Gentiles got saved. On, on, uh, because of that also, well, they were invited to come into the kingdom also. So at Pentecost, the church was born. It's the birth of the church. It's like a mother giving birth to a child at a certain time certain time frame, well, the church was born at a certain time. That's what we call the day of Pentecost, because the Holy Spirit was given, and without the Holy Spirit, again, what, what were the apostles doing during, during that time before Pentecost, which was 50 days after Christ? What were they doing? Some of them were locked in a room. Well, they were locked in a room. Some of them had gone fishing. When Jesus came to visit them, Thomas wasn't there. Who knows where Thomas was? <laughs> then when he came, they, and they told him what happened. He said, well, unless I put my finger in his womb or in his hands, I'm not going to believe it. Mm -hmm. But then when, when, when Jesus did come back again, as soon as he saw him, he knew. He said, my Lord, my God. But some people have to have a vision or have to have something great happen to them. A lot of times people get saved and, and they're expecting all these things to happen at that moment. We're not saved by feeling. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay? That's what it's all about. Okay? Praise the Lord. So, in the closing of the, this one verse, we, we see that the Great Supper. Now, this is a large setting because many guests are invited. Like Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. They don't accept. Like, I, I can call you, Mary, and say, Mary, we're having a big dinner here. We want you to come. And you don't come. You don't want to come and have fellowship or participate in the church or whatever. Any of you here today. God wants to give us so much, but yet we don't want to take it because we think that there's a charge to it. There's a cost to it. Yeah, it's there's not. a cost. Turn, turn away from your sin. Jesus says, let it go and follow me. Man. Well, I can't because I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do this. I have to do that. I can't come to you. I, I can't do that because I have all these things i got to do. I'm still young. Let me live my life. Let me sow my oats. Let me do this. Let me do that. And then at the end of my life, I'll come. Mm -hmm. You may not ever get the opportunity again That's to right. come. Man. We have to understand that God has a time where he calls. And if you let that time go, for those of you that are watching this video or listening to this on the radio, you may not be afforded the, the second chance another time to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord. Amen. Where God said, choose you this day who you will serve. God or man, God or the world. God or the pleasures of the world. God or money. What do you want? 
If you want your money to be your God, you'll perish in hell. That's right. Because you can't take your money with you. But if you want happiness and peace, you will choose Christ this day. Oh, amen. Because choosing him means a life of eternity with him. Mm -hmm. Let's move right along to Luke chapter 14 and verse 17, which says, And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that, that were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. That's the King James. And the contemporary English version says, When the banquet was ready, he sent a servant to tell the guest, Everything is ready, please come. Now, you can see us in this. We're servants. We take the good news to people and tell them. Because we work for the Master. We work for God. Christ came to do the will of the Father. And what His Father spoke, He spoke. So God sends us out. He sent Christ out. He sent, he sent the apostles out. He sent the evangelists, pastors, and teachers out. The witnesses out. We are sent out as Christians. Some people won't go out. And some people won't accept the invitation to come to the banquet. So you have all these different types of people. And God is saying today, come in because time is short. The end is near. Come in. Come in. Come. Come eat. Come drink. Come feast. Yeah. For the time is at hand. Come. But they still won't come. Because their priorities are in the wrong place. <coughs> so he sent his servant. Talk about that. An invitation had been made earlier. But this servant was sent at the time that the supper was ready. From this it would seem that it was the custom to announce to those invited guests the time when the feast was prepared. The custom here referred to still prevails in Palestine, in, in that culture today. You send the invitation, then you confirm and say, yeah, it's still on. Come. We're still having it. Come. Like we had the yard sale, we're still having it. Yes, we're, we're having it. That's the time. Make sure you get everything out. Make sure you bring your things to sell, whatever. Okay. Yes, we're having service this Sunday at the same time. You know, people will have, well, you can tell them, we're we'll calling people. Yes, we'll be here this week, but we're going to do this. We're going to do that. That was the custom in the other day. They checked and rechecked. It's like a reminder. How many of us so often need a reminder? about things. Now, isn't it strange that we don't need a reminder to go to work? <laughs> we don't need reminders for things like that or to go to some party somewhere. But we need a reminder when it comes to the things of God. Why? Because we are flesh. The first thing we cater to is the flesh. Mm -hmm. It's our nature. It's with us. It's not natural for us to cater to the spirit. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be but we always cater to the flesh before the spirit that's why we have to repent because we sin yes. it's easy to sin it's natural it's hard not to sin mm -hmm. so it says come for all things are ready this is the second invitation which it is the usual course to give at that time See, John the Baptist told the people to get ready, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some say the kingdom of God is at hand. And the gospel of Christ bids all to come, and is still the gospel, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is a message for today. This has been a message for over 2,000 years. It came with John the Baptist. Jesus affirmed it. And we as witnesses, Disciples, Christians, are to take the same message. Come, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So, let's go on to uh, Luke 14, verse 18. 
and the all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of land, and I must go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. <laughs> Sound familiar? Oh, we come to church, come to, oh yeah, oh, so, oh no, I can't make it, I have to do this. I can't come with you. But say, oh, I'll, I'll be there, I'll be there, yeah, yeah, just call and remind me. Or they don't answer the phone, you get the voicemail, right? Mm -hmm. Seems like that's just the natural way in this time. People don't have time for God. They have time for everything else. That's right. So in the uh, contemporary English version, it says, one guest after another started making excuses. The first said, I bought some land, and I've got to go look it over. Think about how, just think about how stupid that sounds as we go into it. I bought land. <laughs> so, I have bought a piece of ground. Perhaps he had purchased it on the condition that he found it as good as it had been presented to him. How many people buy land? Well, they sure property in Arizona. I guess, I guess people have bought things like that before, right? <laughs> or lake property somewhere, you know, and saw water like any Everglades, you know. <laughs> yeah, we there's water on your property, yeah, but it's all swamp. Now, people have bought property like that, mm -hmm. we understand. Mm -hmm. But what intelligent person <laughs> would buy land and not look at it? That doesn't sound, it's just not logical to do that. You know that they're careless and carefree and not caring about anything. They take their hard-earned money and buy something that they haven't seen. I know people that buy cars that they don't even see. They just buy them on the internet. They haven't seen them. They haven't went and looked at them. They don't know what it looks like. <laughs> they see a picture, but they don't know what it actually looks like. They don't look at the car. They don't expect it. It may look good, but it may not have an engine. It may not have a transmission. I mean, who knows, but people buy things like that. They don't know the condition of it, but they buy it. And this is what's happening here. This man bought a piece of ground that he didn't even look at. Can you imagine buying some land in Judea, in the mountains of Judea or something? <laughs> what's he going to plant there? Nothing. <laughs> what's he going to buy? That's not fertile ground. You want to buy ground that, that's near an oasis, near a lake, where it's fertile. You don't want to buy... Uh, land somewhere where it's dry and barren in a desert, but this man bought some land without even looking at He said, I must needs go, or I have a necessity to go. Well, I'm obliged to go and see it. Possibly a pleading contract with an agreement that he would go soon and, and examine it. However, we may learn this, that sinners sometimes plead that they are under a necessary event and this event that that they are that they feel like they need to be at or committed themselves to takes precedence over their soul. It's, have, it's like, like instead of going to a Christian concert, or they go somewhere where there's a, a say a revival, they go to a rock concert, or they go to or they go to a ball game. Well, there's plenty of food to eat, hot dogs and beer, right, and peanuts. But they put the state of their soul on the bottom of the list mm -hmm. so they can enjoy the pleasures of this world for a season. And this is the problem that we have. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that we see in this verse the first one who had refused to attend the dinner feast. He was in such a hurry to go and see his purchase that he couldn't find time to attend. Okay. He has purchased some land which was in his mind a good bargain and wanted above all to go and see whether it was worth what he had paid for. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? His heart was so much fixed on enlarging his estate that he could neither be civil to his friends who invited him or kind even to himself by attending the great dinner and being saved. What will a man give 
for a soul? What's it worth? If you're out there watching this video today and you're lost, what will you give in exchange for your soul? Will you get the pleasures of this world, or will you give your life to Christ that you may be born again? Mm -hmm. Remember, eternity is forever. This life is temporal. That's right. And no day is guaranteed to you. So, people have their hearts fixed on the things of this world instead of the things of God. They don't care about the things that are eternal. Just the things that will give them pleasure right now. That's all they want. Temporary gratification. So let's go on to Luke 14 and 19. It says, And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. This is really a good one. And I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. That's the King James Version. The contemporary English version says, Another guest said, I have five teams of oxen. And I need to go and try them out. Please excuse me. <laughs> that's like buying an automobile. Or I mean, that's like buying a tractor. <laughs> you haven't seen. Somebody said, oh, you tell them, oh, I need a tractor. Oh, I have one here. And have you ever went down a country road, see some old tractor rusted up with steel <laughs> rim tires and everything on it? This, this is what happened. The guy's going to buy a tractor like that. He's going to give up his eternal life to go see a tractor, it may be a 1920, 1930 tractor, even if it's a, a 1995 tractor, it's wiped out. It's no good. So he's buying something on the internet that he has never seen. And he might have seen a picture, but that, that, that doesn't mean that's what it looks like. A lot of times we do that. We buy things that we don't even know what kind of condition they're in. But one thing we know, that when you dedicate your life to Christ, when you do things for Christ, when you come into the kingdom of God, there's nothing else that, that could ever possibly fulfill you. You cannot gain anything else. The greatest thing to gain in this world is eternal life. Amen. Because it transfers from this world to the world to come. And... Being lost transfers. <laughs> if you're lost in this world, you're lost in the world to come. Yes, Means if you go to torment, you just jump from one temperature to another temperature, a lot hotter. Yeah, that's it when you're lost. But when you come to Christ, that joy and peace that you have to Christ transfers to a greater peace yes, it does. and joy and love in your life to come, okay? So, let me just break this down real quick. I'm just gonna to touch on one item. I go to prove them, which means to try them, to see if he had made a good bargain. It is worthy of remark that this excuse was very trifling. He could as easily try them at another time or another day. He could have checked them out another time. He bought, say, so, oh, Somebody said, well, this is a great deal. You know, buy this house today. Buy this car today because it's going to be gone tomorrow. You know, it won't be here tomorrow. You know, it's just only for a limited time. If it's for a limited time, keep on going. You don't need it. I got people standing in line for this car or this house. Oh, well, sure, that's why it's been on the market for three or four years. <laughs> or the car hasn't sold all year and it's a brand new car. There's nobody waiting to buy that car. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hurry up and buy it right now. It won't be here later on. <laughs> no. But people put material things above their eternal destiny, right. above their souls. And this is what's happening here. Okay? So, let's go to uh, Luke 14 and 20. Mm -hmm. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. That's the King James Version. The contemporary English Version says, still another guest said, I have gotten married, and I can't be there. <laughs> My wife won't let me. <laughs> she won't let me out to, to play. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> 
That's an excuse. What about being in one accord? I guess that doesn't count here, right? It's like you see on, uh, on TV, who in the world did I marry? One lady married a guy, three months later, she tried to buy a hit on him. <laughs> Something wrong there, right? From, from the very beginning. <laughs> and this fellow has a problem. I have married a wife. See, our Savior here, Dallas, intends to teach us that the love of earthly relatives and friends often uh, takes off the affection, our, our affections from God. Some people are so in love with their spouse or their children, they don't have time for God. They don't have time. Not understanding that God is the only one that can solve the problems. It's like, God, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, really? He knows what you're going through. He knows your problems. And he has a solution to your problems. Yes, he does. Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For yes. your souls. But see, we just want to forget that kind of thing. We want to forget God out of our troubles and try to handle it themselves. Or guess what? They can go to the great mastermind, the bartender. He's got all the answers, right? He has all the answers. Go to, and that's where people go. They go get drunk, tell all their troubles to the bartender. And he's been married five or six times already himself. He doesn't have any answers, but they go to him. Yeah. Well, better yet, Go to a lawyer. He'll tell you to sue the pants off of them, take everything they got, mm -hmm. do, do everything for them. And this was the person that you were married to and said, for better, for worse, to cherish, to love, honor. Okay, but now the lawyer's telling you, take them to the cleaners. <laughs> Strip them of everything he has. So when we go to the world for answers, these are the answers that you get. Yes. Yeah, I like that one about the bartender. <laughs> it's a pretty good one. Well, because you got in your right mind anything. You're wrong. He can tell you anything. He can tell you about his experiences. All except, you know, he's like, he was like, he's like the woman at the well. You know what I mean? Even the, even the one you're with now isn't your husband. You know, that yeah, kind of story. Yeah. But, so we'll just uh, carry on there. So, we have to understand that there... We can find a million excuses not to come to Christ. Mm -hmm. When you put them all in one barrel, it comes out to the same thing. Rejection mm -hmm. of what God has for you. Yes. That's eternal life. So, remember that our affection to our relations often proves a hindrance to us in our duty to God. Let's go back real quick to Adam. Everybody know Adam? <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the father? Okay. What did he say to God? The woman that thou gavest me persuaded me to eat. She twisted his arm, <laughs> put it in back of him like this, and, and then grabbed his load <laughs> and led him to eat the fruit. I don't care if it was an apple, orange, tangerine, I don't care what it was. Granada, we don't care, right? It was something. When God says, I give you authority, even over the woman, he let the wife tell him what to do. Now, darling, if you love me, here he goes. It's just like an ox to the slaughter. <laughs> he went, and sin came into the world at that time. Yes. So, so he might have gone and taken his wife along with him. Remember that. Why didn't he take his wife with him? The man. Instead of saying, no, I can't leave my wife. Why didn't he take his wife? Why didn't they do it together? Mm -hmm. What was he hiding there? <laughs> what, was he, what was he hiding? <laughs> he didn't want to take his wife to the banquet? What was she? What was wrong with her? Was there something wrong? She had one leg or what? What was wrong? There was something wrong. He could have taken her to the banquet. Yeah. It's like ministering, you know, bring the message of eternal life and hope. He not only denied himself, but he denied his wife. 
Sometimes we do that. We deny our spouses eternal life. Mm -hmm. Because we don't like, oh, so I, can hear, I hear a lot of women, women say, they went to church for years. I said, well, bring your husband. They go to church, and their husband will never go to church. So he, he has his own mind. Oh, I'd let him do what he wants to do. Instead of ministering to him and saying, come to church with me. So I let him do his own thing. He don't stop me from going to church. I don't stop. I don't make him go. I don't stop him from going fishing, or whatever, or washing the car, or mowing the grass, whatever. When they could take their husband and say, "Come be with me." So, I mean, we don't have all the answers of why things happen, but we we know that we could avoid some catastrophic events taking place in our lives if we only yield ourselves to God. So let me cover uh, 14 and 21. It said, So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And that message, that's an invitation for us. Because the Jews refused, we were allowed to come in to the banquet. Mm -hmm. Gentiles. Thank you. Now we're switching from the Jews to the Gentiles. That's us. The uh, contemporary English version says, The servant told his master what happened. And the master became so angry that he said, Go as fast as you can to every street and alley in town. Bring in everyone who is poor or crippled or blind or lame. That's us. We got invited in because the Jews, the Jewish nation, refused. Praise God that we were given the invitation yes. to come to the kingdom. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. To all of you that are listening to this or watching it, God is inviting you to come into the kingdom. Yes, He is. The door is open. For how long it's open, I have no idea. But the door is open. And you may enter in. So let me give you a few closing notes, okay? That... God is calling you to be a guest at this great banquet. The thing is, is will you go to the banquet? The other point is, everything is ready. But you have to give something up in order to come. You have to give up the world to follow Christ. You have to give up other things. It may seem like you want to give up pleasures, but you're not. Because when you come to Christ, then things won't make any difference to you anymore. The things you used to do, you won't have that desire to do them anymore. Because you will see that the things of God are far better than the things of this life. For the things of this life are temporal, but the things of God are forever. The thing is, is where are your priorities? What do you want out of this life? You can choose life or you can choose death. See, let me just touch on a couple quick things. The provision for this banquet is, is put forth because God values the souls of mankind as precious. Because whether we want to accept it or not, we are poor and low and needing. And we need to accept what God wants to give us, that we may be rich 
in the life to come, but not only the life to come, but in this present life too. Because look what the fruit of the Spirit is, the first three items, love, joy, and peace. And that is what the world is seeking after, but the world will never receive it. And what they do receive is only on a temporary basis, because they could never fulfill them. See, many times we feel like we need to be involved in the things that we can see mm. instead of the things that we can't see. I have joy knowing that I'm going to be in heaven. Yes. I haven't yes. seen heaven, but I have peace in my soul yes. because of Jesus Christ. We have to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for us. And He's going to fulfill that plan. In closing, I, I want to touch on one more verse. Okay? That is chapter 14 and verse 24. And I hope that you receive this as a warning today. In King James Version it says, For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Those that were invited and refused are lost. Are lost. The contemporary English version says, None of the guests I first invited will even get a bite of my food. I mean, just think about what God's saying here. He's giving you the, the end result of refusing to come yes. to salvation through Jesus Christ. Mm, yeah. The mm. English Standard Version says, For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet, shall never, mm. never taste of my goodness. Oh my God. Never. Think about it. Think about who you know that is going to hell. They will never get the opportunity again. I, these are my words. This is what the scripture is saying. Right? Let's choose you this day who you will serve, God or the world. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh, next week or this or that. The Bible says you're a fool. For you, because you don't know what tomorrow will bring. You're a fool. That's right. The devil wants you to know that. Hey, you got all the time in the world. Read the obituary. That tells you how much time you have. People didn't wake up this morning and went right to torment. People woke up and went to heaven because they accepted Christ. What the, um, the decision that you make today could determine where you spend eternity. That's why we always have an altar call after our messages. Yes, amen. That you won't perish, but you have eternal life. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Which is, for I say unto you, these may be considered as the words of Jesus making an application of the parable to the Pharisees before him. They were holy. They were religious. But they weren't saved. Go to church all you want. Without Christ, you're going to hell. Man. Being on a church committee makes no difference. Buy a brick to build the church. Makes no difference. Without Christ as your Savior and Lord, it's all lost. None of those men, this cannot be understood as meaning that no Jews would come. No, that's not what it means. 
But those that were invited refused. As an individual, you can either accept or reject. If I was invited and I have rejected Christ, that doesn't mean I, all my family won't get saved. No. It's, a, it's on an individual basis. So, but those that accepted, those who gave the right to become the sons of God. It's an individual call. I can't, because I'm going to heaven, that doesn't mean anybody else in my family is going to heaven. They have to come in the same way. They have to come into the sheepfold. They have to come in through the gate. Straight as the gate and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, very few go thereof. Christian, Christians are in a minority compared to those that are lost in the world. So, we have a work to do. And bring as many as we can in the kingdom of God. For the gospel is to the Jew first. So let's don't leave, leave off the Jews. Amen. We need a witness to the Jews. But we must do it properly and in love. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, the, the question that I want to ask today is have you rejected the gospel call or accepted the gospel call? You have other, you, you have either accepted it or rejected it. That's, that's it. There's no in between. To say, oh, I, I thought about it. <clears throat> See, if you say, oh, I thought about it, that means that you're lost. <laughs> you say, yes, I accepted Christ, that means you're saved. Yeah. So you either are or you aren't. Middle of the road. See, there is no middle of the road. Middle of the road means you're lost. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. Maybe next time I go to church. You may not see that next time. And you don't have to go to a church Amen. to get saved. <laughs> so I'm thinking about that today. You're watching this video, or listening to it on the radio, but you're not in church. In a church physically. But you are at church service today. Because we are a church here. Yes, we are. And we are your church today. So, let me say this. If you're a sinner, you're doomed for hell. If you're a saint, you're doomed for heaven. Amen. Will you come to the banquet today? Will you accept Christ as your Savior Lord today? And come into the body of Christ. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior Lord, I'm going to pray with you today. Yes. You may come in the kingdom of God. See, I can, I can lead you in a prayer, but I can't get saved for you. You must make that decision. Yes. So if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, Lord, you heard the message today, you're going to hell. And as it is, as it was spoken of in the message today, what is your excuse for not coming to Christ? They won't hold water. They have, they'll have no substance when you stand before Christ at the judgment. Accept Christ today. Be guaranteed your seat yes. at his banquet. So if, you're, if you have never accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord, won't you pray this prayer with me today? Yes. But you must pray the prayer. I will lead you in how to receive Christ, but you must believe in your heart yes. and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when you receive Christ, you must live a holy life. Certain things you must do. You must go to a church. You must read God's Word. You must pray. You must ask God for guidance. You must be disciple. Yes. It's not, it doesn't stop just because you say, I'm a Christian. You must live a spirit-filled life. Yes. Amen. So let us pray. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I come before you a sinner. 
I heard the message today. What is your excuse for not coming to Christ? I have never come to Christ. Therefore, I'm on the road to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I know other Christians. Some with good testimonies. Some not with good testimonies. But it doesn't make any difference because I don't judge people. Amen. You judge. And I'm asking you to judge me as innocent because I'm asking you today to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I'm sorry for my sins. I'm sorry for offending you. I believe that Jesus Christ was born, he was crucified, died, and risen from the dead and ascended into heaven. I believe that he is the Savior of all mankind. And I want to accept him as my Savior and Lord. Please forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and cleanse me in the blood of the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ. Yes. Teach me, lead me, guide me yes. in the things that you have for me to do. I promise that I will follow you all the days of my life. And when I fall short, if I fall short, that you will be there to pick me up. And I thank you for saving me today and for being my Lord. And I ask for your help more than ever that I may grow in your truth. Thank you for saving me today and for, for forgiving me of all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer today, welcome into the kingdom of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. First thing I want you to do is to find a church, a Bible preaching, teaching church. Not just watch it on TV. That won't do it. You need to go to a church, have fellowship. Yes. Go down to the altar. Ask the preacher to anoint you with oil, to pray over you. Yes. And to baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do that, please. Yes. Okay. Tell them that you need a Bible. Or if you have a Bible, start reading it today. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. Oh, yeah. And what you can also do is email me and tell me that you accepted Christ as your Savior and Lord. You can contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. Please contact me and continue to listen to us on PowerRadio.com. Watch our videos on Ustream.tv on youtube.com or on godtube.com yes. please contact us but I want, want, what I want you to really do is go to a church tell them you accepted Christ ask them to pray with you God bless you and thank you for joining us today our message is what is your excuse for not coming to Christ from Luke chapter 14 starting with verse 18. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, yes. I'm Bishop Ramon D. Murray, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. God bless you, and <coughs> walk with God.